Archie Manning continues to be a community advocate. Now you'll be joining Jake DeLome and coach Mark Hudspeth later to talk about football and leadership. What lessons did the sport teach you that you still carry with you today? Well, I think you mentioned one thing, leadership. It's a little hot out here, but it's great to be back in Death Valley for another college football season. The LSU Tigers hosting the McNeese State Cowboys, and LSU fans will finally get a chance to see quarterback Brandon Harris lead the Tigers offense in week one. LSU Tigers were favored to beat Eastern Michigan by 45 points, and they'd come pretty close, scoring 44, but it wouldn't come easy. The Tigers offense would struggle to complete passes, and they'd give up their first turnover of the season, but thanks to the Heisman hopeful Leonard Fournette, he would put the team on his back and carry the Tigers to another victory. The Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns are looking to finish strong against Rice this evening, but whatever tonight's outcome, this weekend has been an opportunity to face postseason caliber opponents. In the Sunbelt Conference Tournament and in the Houston Regional, the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns became known as the Cardiac Cajuns, and in Game 1 of the Baton Rouge Super Regional, it seemed that the Cajuns would live up to that nickname name once again. 24 year old Melanie Jankower's dream of becoming a raging Cajun cheerleader came true this basketball season. The squad welcomed her with open arms as part of the learning is for everyone program at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. The life program provides academic and social opportunities at the college level for young adults with special needs. Graduate assistant coach Courtney Begno says Melanie is always smiling. No matter how the game's going, no matter how tired she is, she always has that big raging Cajun smile. Having her on the team brings so much joy to us. She's always spirited, always smiling. Sometimes she does a better job than us. She definitely has a lot of life and spirit that she's brought to us. Melanie's mother, Laura, is a diehard Cajuns fan and is absolutely tickled to see her daughter sporting vermilion and white. It just thrills me to death, that especially, you know, a child with special needs to be so embraced by the community and by the cheer squad. I mean, they just have taken her by the hand and she feels like she is a center of attention and I kind of think she is. <laughs> Melanie practices with the squad and knows every dance and cheer. Her favorite. A fight song. But Melanie isn't done dreaming yet. She just started this fall and she'll go for four years and she wants to be a librarian. So she's in the library science program here. With a pair of pom-poms and a big red hair bow, Melanie's joie de vivre is contagious. She really does put a smile on every single person's face that she encounters. She definitely brings life to the team. In Lafayette, Lydia Magallanes, News 10 Sports. The past several months have been a challenge for Eunice High School head football coach Paul Trosclair after a cancer diagnosis last year. But now he's back under the lights for the Bobcats this season. Last July, Eunice head football coach Paul Trosclair was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, a rare and incurable cancer of the plasma cells. The disease interferes with the production of normal blood cells in the bone marrow. Things change quickly when you get sick. And you have to reevaluate how you do things. So I'm just fortunate to be able to do it. A lot of people with this disorder don't don't try to do what I'm trying to do. With support from family and friends and the occasional help of a golf cart, we got a little water. Coach Trosclair is back on the field preparing the Bobcats for another season. These guys are special, you know, they, they support me and give me a lot of support, make me feel good about being out here. I mean, it's a good place to be even though it's a little humid, but uh, it's, <laughs> we, we're having a good time. I mean, it's fun to work with a team that wants to be out here. You know, we have to hold them back and tell them to go home sometimes. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Senior linebacker Ajay Johnson says coach's return to the gridiron inspires the team. He doesn't really show it on out too much. He'll come to practice, although sometimes he can't always walk. He'll be there for us, so we know that he's just still supporting us. We see that he's willing to work for us, so we have to put out more so that we can work for him and make him proud. I know he's been working hard all these years, and I just want to help him hone his skills like he has 200 wins. I want to actually prolong that so we actually have a record place in the record books. For assistant coach Andre Vijay, Trosclair's strength is one of the many reasons he respects his former coach and current colleague. I was fortunate to have him my last two years in high school. and uh, He's grown a lot on me, not as a coach, but uh, to teach me what type of coach I wanted to be. For knowing him for so long, we could tell something was bothering him. And for him to come out here and go through what he has gone, it's just an inspiration to the team. You know, he preaches mental toughness, and I think he showed the true meaning of 
mental toughness and when he came back out here going through the sickness that he went through. And when your leader does something like that, what you do is you get behind him. You know, when he was down last year, you try to pick things up. Football may not be a cure for cancer, but after coaching at Eunice for 18 years, it's the best treatment for Paul Trosclair. I'm just happy to be here. The Louisiana Raging Cajuns methodically powered past Arizona 10 to 3, and not a single Cajuns batter went down swinging as the Wildcats burned through five pitchers in Sunday's regional matchup. The Cajuns would out hit Arizona 11 to 7. Senior Stephen Trosclair was one of three Cajuns to get a pair of hits and finished with a game high three RBI, including a solo shot in the third. Before the game, we were talking with coach, and uh, we wanted to come out from pitch one and be ready to play. And uh, that was a, a big, big thing today. And no matter when pitch one was, what time it was for the rain and everything, we, we came out ready to play and from the beginning. And, and I think that's, that helped us through the game. Bunting would come up big for the Cajuns against the Wildcats. After giving up a two-run homer in the top of the fifth, a Brian Mills double squeeze gave the Cajuns a 9-3 edge. They were looking to throw a strike right there. So I was expecting him to give it to me. He gave it to me. I really didn't know that both runners scored until I got back into the dugout. But um, I just went in there with the mindset of wherever he throw it, I'm going to get it down. And the execution of a sparingly used play, proof that the Cajuns can win in different ways. The button comes from in here. It comes from inside your gut. you gotta, you got to want to do it. you got to want to be good at it. When you can be good at it, you can shorten the field. And when you can shorten the field, then you can lengthen it. We grind it out, try to find a way to win. doesn't matter if the three hole has the bone or not. We, uh, we've worked, we all work on it. One through nine, every one of us can do it. Thanks, guys. Back here in Lafayette, it was a busy day for Raging Cajuns Athletics. A little too windy, a little too chilly, if you ask me. Had to double up on these jackets here. Cajuns baseball kicked things off at the tee with a doubleheader against the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Game one against the Trojans, Gunnar Leje strikes out the first batter of the game, but Little Rock on the board first. Dalton Thomas doubles and brings home a runner. Cajuns trail by one. Bottom of the first now. Bren Conrad hits a two-run homer to right field. That's his second homer of the season, and the Cajuns take the 2-1 lead. Check out this Cajuns double play. Not in my house, no sir. Gunnar Leger showing off the leather, steps in for first base. In the third now, Brian Mills sends one up and over to left center field for two. That's Mills' first homer of the season. Cajuns up now 4-1. They'll cruise past the Trojans 15-4 in game one of the series, but Little Rock will come back and take game two 10 to 5. SU Tigers were favored to beat Eastern Michigan by 45 points and they'd come pretty close scoring 44, but it wouldn't come easy. The Tigers offense would struggle to complete passes and they'd give up their first turnover of the season. But thanks to the Heisman hopeful Leonard Fournette, he would put the team on his back and carry the Tigers to another victory. Quarterback Brandon Harris was 4 of 15 for 80 yards, something head coach Les Miles says could not be helped. There's nothing that he can do to correct, you know, when you hit a guy dead in the hands and, and he doesn't bring it in. But the cards were in LSU's favor with lucky number seven. Fournette finished the night with 26 carries for 233 yards and three touchdowns. Although he wouldn't break the single game rushing record on Saturday, he did become the first running back in SEC history to rush for more than 200 yards in three consecutive games. That's God, man. Uh, I thank God for this opportunity he gave me and uh, the talent they gave me. You know, without my line, my fullback, I'm nothing. Can't block those 11 guys by myself and run the ball. He's a once in a lifetime player. There's not many cornerbacks and safeties. In my opinion, any cornerback and safety can stop him. He'll run around him, run through him, whatever he has to do. There's not a time where you know you hand him a ball that he doesn't have a, a an opportunity to, to hit a home run. But Fournette says he's more concerned with the Tigers' poor performance against the Eagles, something that won't fly against South Carolina next week. I'm estimating him by uh, their record and stuff. So, but like, like I said, that's on us. It's on uh, the leads on the team, and I promise you we'll pick it up. Leonard Fournette is now the first running back in SEC history to rush for more than 200 yards in three consecutive games. In Baton Rouge, covering the Tigers, Lydia Magallanes, News 10 Sports. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lydia Magallanes, the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns, hosting the Northwestern State Demons tonight in their home opener. Tonight's matchup is the first of six home games being played at Cajun Field this season. The Cajuns looking to pick up their first win of 2015 and avoid their, avoid their second 0-2 start under head coach Mark Hudspeth. 
The Cajuns not underestimating the Demons. We're going to start you off in the first quarter. Brooks Hacks, the starter in tonight's game. He finds Elijah McGuire for the seven-yard touchdown run. Cajun on the board first. And McGuire is just getting started. He's going to break off. And he's going to run free into the sunset like a happy ending to a fairy tale. But the story is not over yet. 88 yard touchdown there for another score. 14 0 now. To the second we go. The Demons are going to play it on the ground. NSU's Joel Blumenthal finds Chris Jones for 41 yards. The Demons' first touchdown of the night, and they'll cut that lead 14 7. Cajun still in the second. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Elijah McGuire Show. The running back is not done. Here's a quick three yard run. 20 to 7. Cajuns still leading, and they're in business. McGuire is leading the pack, of course, and Hacks links up again with McGuire for 24 yards. Your score 27 to 7. Cajuns up with just a few seconds here left in the half. NSU will settle for a field goal. Chris Moore drills this one for 21 yards, 27 to 10. Cajuns up in the third quarter now. Can you guess what's going to happen next, folks? McGuire punches it in for the one yard touchdown. This kid absolutely going off.